This is the Strecker synthesis of amino acids. I've chosen a fairly simple amino acid. It's an amino acid because it contains an amine group and it contains a carboxylic acid group. Now let's look at the building blocks. We've got a three-component reaction. It's got an ESAR group as its side chain. At the top here, we've got the carboxylic acid group. That's going to originate in this chemistry from the hydrolysis of a nitrile. And there's the nitrile group. That's hydrocyanic acid itself. And we've got ammonia as a building block as well for the NH2 group here. Now let's get the pattern of reactivity sorted out. Carbon-oxygen double bond, that's going to be an electrophile. We've got HCN here, that's hydrocyanic acid, so it dissociates into H plus and CN minus, and CN minus is a nucleophile. And you know, because I've just flagged it up to you, that the carboxylic acid is becoming attached to the carbon in the propanal starting material by use of the nitrile. So the nitrile is the nucleophile reacting with this electrophilic center. Now let's check out the ammonia chemistry. Nitrogen, a nucleophile. Uh, so this carbon-nitrogen bond is formed by using the electrophilicity of the C double bond O, the polar multiple bond, twice over. And that's possible because we make an iminium ion first using the CO multiple bond, and then that iminium ion is still electrophilic, generated in the presence of a carbon-centered nucleophile. And that's how the second carbon-carbon bond formation can occur. So the sequence of events is CN bond formation first and CC bond formation second. Then hydrolysis, an irreversible process, because although it's technically reversible, the final step isn't accessible. Instead, the ammonia reacts with the carboxylic acid to generate an anion. No leaving group here, so you can't go back into that mechanism, back to the starting materials. And that is why the Strecker synthesis of amino acids is such a good synthesis in practical terms.